watching Let's Chat. Race fans, take note of our next guest. This is a name that you've heard in the past, you'll be hearing a lot of in the future, and it is the son of one of the NASCAR competitors, one of the NASCAR bigwigs, Joe Nemechek. This is John Hunter Nemechek. John Hunter, good to meet you. Thank you, thank you for uh, having me. Tell me about your, your interest in NASCAR. <laughs> Obviously, it's hereditary, right? It definitely is. Growing up at the racetrack, I was two weeks old the first time that I went to a race with two my weeks. mom and dad, yes. <laughs> I don't remember it, um, but I, I've grown up around it. Racing is in my blood. Right. So um, it's kind of my passion and my desire and what I love to do each and every weekend. How long have you been driving? I got my first go-kart when I was three years old. Um, <laughs> I'm 22 now. So um, wow. being able to be driving since I was three is pretty uh, amazing and yeah. remarkable. But um, been some up, ups and downs through the sure. years. Um, sure. Been some crashes and some wins, but we're it's gonna been a talk, fun journey. We're going to talk about that here in a moment. But I want you to tell me, what's it like? When you get behind the wheel, you hear the words, gentlemen, start your <laughs> engines. What goes through your mind? Uh, fired up. Um, at that time, you're so focused in on what you need to do. Uh -huh. um, come race time, you're listening to your spotter, getting all of your radio communication checks, and checking your wheel, pulling your belts tight, and getting ready to go racing. You kind of step into another persona when that happens? Yeah, I would say definitely you step into a different persona. Mm -hmm. um, you're all smiles in front of the camera. Right. And when you put your helmet on, it's go time. Um, yeah. that, that's your time to focus and sure. be ready to do what you do. Uh, we have a couple of pieces of video that I want to share. Uh, the first <laughs> piece is your first win. No, I'm sorry. This is what happened last week in New Hampshire. You had a brake failure. I did. What happened? I uh, drove down into turn one and at New Hampshire Motor Speedway. Um, you used quite a bit of brake getting in the corner. So um, it was a wild ride. Um, that's the second time that I've ever had brakes fail on me. Um, we had a parts failure in our right rear caliper and the hit the brake pedal and went to the floor. The and at that point, you're just along for the ride, trying not to hit stuff too hard. Um, that was probably one of the hardest hits I've taken. You're going um, into damage control at that point. Exactly. You're, you're trying not to have too much damage. And sadly, we had too much damage to continue. Um, um, at the end of that day, which definitely stinks for yeah. our team. We lost a few points and But you spots, weren't hurt. But That's the important thing. I wasn't hurt. Um, right. Just a little bit sore. Now let's take a look at some of your earlier <laughs> wins. I think we have video of the first win that you uh, that, that you were behind the wheel on. Tell me about this one. Yes, so this was a really special day. Um, my dad's first NASCAR Cup Series win came in 1999 on this exact day. So oh, wow. 16 years later, um, we ended up winning my first NASCAR King World Truck Series race or my first NASCAR national race. Um, ran out of gas coming across the line. That's how close that was. Um, wow. This being at Atlanta, this was my second ever win the following year. Um, I've had some great success in the NASCAR Gander Outdoor Truck Series, which has been a lot of fun. And you're going to be hitting the Bristol Motor Speedway coming up here in a couple of weeks. That's kind of a different <laughs> animal because it's a half mile track. What how are you different behind a track like Bristol as opposed to one like you were in Atlanta? Uh, your technique changes. Mm -hmm. Bristol, last great Coliseum, a lot of banking, yeah. fast speeds, uh, one of the fastest short tracks that we go to. Mm -hmm. um, you can drive in the corner hard, you can run the bottom, the top, the middle, and you can pretty much run wherever. Tempers flare, sparks fly, and there's a lot of beating and banging underneath <laughs> the lights. So um, you do whatever it takes yeah. to win at Bristol. And of course, um, it takes an entire team to do what you do. Tell me about your team. You're like <laughs> um, an extended family, right? Yes, exactly. Um, we're, we're all really close to each other. My crew chief, uh, all the guys that work on the car. Um, I'm in the shop quite a bit with our guys and able to communicate with them and have a lot of fun. And we play games on each other, but we're one big family. <laughs> um, our GMS racing team has definitely shown speed this year. So. Uh, and of course, the Food City 300, which is coming up here in a couple of weeks, is one of the final races of the, uh, the uh, Xfinity series. Does that put a different kind of pressure on you? <laughs> um, yes and no. If we we're in a different situation than we were in points right mm -hmm. now, um, right. we're pretty much locked into the playoffs and starting the playoffs. So um, these next few races, we're going to take some gambles and see if we can go get some trophies and some playoff points uh, ready for that playoff season to start. But um, you never know what can happen at the end of the regular season. Take yourself out from behind the wheel and put yourself in the stands as a huge fan. <laughs> 
I mean, tell me what that is like. Why is the fan appeal, especially in Bristol, so high? It's so amazing. Um, the last great Coliseum, there's stands everywhere. Um, the vibe from the drivers, from watching the cars underneath the lights with amazing sponsors and paint schemes and sparks flying and everyone running into yeah. each other and creating really great entertainment. Um, it, it's a it's a great time. It's a blast. Uh, families are very welcome. Yeah. Um, kids, I think, 12 and under get in free. So Absolutely, um, it, it's a great time to have your whole family out and enjoy a night of racing at Bristol. I know there have been several times where the city of Bristol turned into the biggest city in <laughs> Tennessee because of the race up there. And we certainly wish you a lot of luck. John Hunter, John Hunter, rather. Now, check. we're going to be hearing a lot about you in the future. <laughs> Just remember you were here and you always have an open door to come back. Thank you. Bye. Find out more about what's happening at the Food City 300 at the Bristol Motor Speedway. It's under the lights, 7:30 Friday, August 16th. Check them out, BristolMotorSpeedway.com. Again, BristolMotorSpeedway.com.